Coming up on the RMAX Showcase, a record day at Colorado Mines. Great improvisation by Dvorak. It's the first game for the new coach in the brand new stadium, but this offense sure looks familiar. We feature the Colorado School of Mines on this episode. New stadium, new coach, and a new president. We'll hear from Dr. Paul Johnson. The Ordiggers volleyball team wins a thriller. The Mines soccer teams are rolling. Men's golf has a new star. And cross country has high hopes. That's all ahead on the RMAX Showcase. Welcome to the RMAX Showcase, coming to you from the Colorado School of Mines in Golden, where they have a brand new football stadium. I'm Eric Danner. Plenty of new things happening here at Colorado Mines around the football program, including a brand new coach. Greg Brandon is the new head man for the Ordiggers. He's a Colorado native who played high school football for former CU coach Gary Barnett at Air Academy High School back in the 70s. Brandon then played football at Mesa State. He's been coaching for more than 30 years. That includes a stint as Urban Meyer's top assistant at Bowling Green. Brandon was then the Falcons head coach for five seasons after Meyer went to Utah. Last year, Brandon was offensive coordinator at New Mexico State, and now he's happy to be back in Colorado. The football field here at Marv K Stadium is one of the oldest in the world, first built in the 1800s. But the stadium here is now state of the art at a cost of more than $21 million and a capacity of more than 4,000, named after the legend himself. <laughs> the curtain drops unveiling a plaque honoring the man the Colorado Mine Stadium is named after, Marv K. I'm just overwhelmed, humbled, uh, excited, happy, all, all the neat things uh, that you can imagine. No one embodies Colorado Mines more than Marv K. He was an All-American football player here, the head football coach for more than 25 years, the athletic director, the mayor of Golden, and after retiring, a driving force to get this stadium built. We had dreams and hopes for many years to, to have a football facility, an athletic facility, uh, state-of-the-art like we have, but, but certainly not with my name on it. This stadium has long been a vision for Marv, who has been coming to this field for 56 years. Some of those thoughts about, uh, you know, meeting my new coaches, meeting my team, and just how fortunate I was to uh, be at Mines and, and to be a Mines football player, that type of thing. An overflow crowd is on hand to witness the ribbon cutting. Friends, family, teammates, coworkers, all here to witness history. This is a, a dream of athletic directors and, and athletic administrators, uh, our, our uh, presidents and alumni, past student athletes. Everybody got together to make this happen. The neat thing about this is this is a transition in my, everything's brand new. I mean, uh, this is set for the next 150 years. Just to uh, give thanks from the bottom of my heart to everybody here at Mines, administrators, uh, uh, my friends uh, across the conference, and, and uh, former athletes. Everybody's had a great part of this. And I'm just a small part of it, but I'm so very honored to have my name on it. Colorado Mines opening Marv K Stadium against the South Dakota School of Mines. The Hard Rockers will be members of the Armac in football next year. Everyone wanting to see this brand new stadium and to see what Greg Brandon's brand new offense would look like. Let's go, Marv K with the coin toss for the first ever game at Marv K Stadium. Mines wins the toss, an omen for the game. Junior quarterback Justin Dvorak would have a day for the ages. First quarter, Dvorak swing pass to Sam Seaton. He scampers 17 yards. Four diggers lead 7-0. Second quarter, Dvorak to Cole Spurgeon. A short throw, but a very nice run. Spurgeon is a tight end, but runs like a wideout. 59 yards, Colorado Mines leading 21-0. Just two minutes later, Dvorak showing off his arm to Jimmy Ellis. 32-yard score, it's now 28-0. Dvorak with three touchdown passes. South Dakota Mines responds Trent McKinney, who is 21 of 35 on the day. Nice throw to Marcus Sanchez. Hard Rockers down 28-7. That is as close as they would get. Two minutes later, Dvorak to Spurgeon again, 30 yards. Dvorak now with four touchdowns on the day, 35-7 is the score. Still second quarter, Dvorak 
Now showing his scrambling ability, running to his left, throwing and finding Ty Young, the catch and the dive in the end zone. Dvorak now with five touchdowns. And when things are going your way, the fake field goal looks like a good heads up play by Dvorak as the kick would have been blocked. He finds Michael Kelso, the defensive lineman for the touchdown. It's 49-14 at the half. Dvorak, six touchdowns on the day. Second half, here's the record. Dvorak to Zach Richter. That is eight touchdown passes, tying the all-time Armac record, setting a new Colorado Mines record. The Ore Diggers win the Marv K Stadium opener. 63-28. Extremely proud of this football team uh, with a new head coach and a new stadium and you know a lot of a lot of stuff going on around the program that might you might consider distractions and these kids focused in and got got the job done today and I, I couldn't be prouder of uh, them. We have practically all of our receivers that came back this year were guys that played a significant role for us last year. Um, had a good spring, had a great fall camp and uh, we're just looking to build off what we started. Dvorak's eight touchdown passes ties the Armac record set last year by New Mexico Highlands Lance Orender. Dvorak was 37 of 49 for 555 yards. That's the seventh most passing yards in one game in Armac history. Keep in mind, the conference is over 100 years old. Football, not the only thing going on here at Colorado Mines. The Ordiggers volleyball team is once again picked to win the conference. CSM has won the Armac title for three years in a row. And once again, they have high hopes, as Connor Putman reports. The Mines volleyball team kicking off their 2015 season at the Ordinger Classic. For the players, it was finally time to play someone other than themselves. It felt great to have some new competition, fresh faces. I mean, uh, it's not just like the same thing over and over again. So it felt great to be out there. The Ordiggers taking on Western Oregon in their first match. Mines winning in straight sets 3-0. Preseason Player of the Year and Setter of the Year, Danielle Johnson Hazelwood leading the way with 39 assists and 10 digs. Alana Winfield and Megan Peterson led the team with 10 kills each. We're going to work really hard every game. We really, you know, rankings are always kind of a, a thing that, you know, some people overlook. And so we're really trying to make sure that we show up every day to play our hardest and don't take any teams for granted. Every team is really good in the RMAC, so we're just going to play really hard this year. Next up for the number eight nationally ranked ore diggers would be a tough test against 20th ranked Northwest Nazarene. Colorado Mines struggles early on, dropping the first two sets 25-22 and 25-23 to the Crusaders. The ore diggers rally back in the next two, winning by a score of 25-21 in each set. Northwest Nazarene takes a commanding 13-9 lead in the fifth and it looks like like curtains for the ore diggers. But Mines, led by Johnson Hazelwood, comes storming back. She had four assists, a kill, and the game-winning block down the stretch as Colorado Mines wins a thriller 16-14. The ore diggers go 4-0 over the weekend and would be the only undefeated RMAC volleyball team after the first week. Reporting in Golden for the RMAC Showcase, Connor Putnam. Thank you, Connor. We'll have more on one of the Colorado Mines volleyball players later in the show. Coming up next, they've got a brand new president here at Colorado Mines. And the men's golf team is hoping to be one of the best in the league. You're watching the Armac Showcase. 